What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Malika and if you wanna learn more about moving abroad, life in other countries, or just how to travel more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you're new to this channel, I just moved from Lebanon to Hong Kong and no, I did not leave because of the current situation. I lived for two years, had the time of my life, and then moved in June for a new work opportunity for my husband. And behind me is a little homage to the city that stole my heart. So here we are in Hong Kong and I wanted to share more about my experience apartment hunting in this city. Hong Kong is a notoriously difficult real estate market, so I wanted to share more of what I learned about the market and apartment hunting here and also show you guys a few places I went to check out in three different neighborhoods of Hong Kong. So if you're moving to Hong Kong, get ready because apartment hunting here is not for the faint of heart. I'm from New York City, so I have a similar painful city to rent in and I even though I'm used to these crazy insane prices for renting in New York, I still got a bit of sticker shock being here. But I'm gonna dive into some of the units I viewed as well as some tidbits for apartment hunting in Hong Kong. And yes, as you can see from the current setup, we did find a place that we loved, so consider that a spoiler. But keep watching anyway for more about apartment hunting for expats in Hong Kong. about Hong Kong, it is an extremely expensive city with a crowded real estate market. As I said before, it's pretty similar to renting in New York, especially trendy areas in Manhattan and Brooklyn. But you can expect to see studios around 20,000 Hong Kong dollars, all the way up to 120,000 for a well, three bedroom. It really does run the gamut, so start with budget and some idea of where you'd like to live and then pivot from there. So the main things on our checklist were a two bedroom, a smooth commute for my husband for work, having a place with a view, and if there was not a gym in the building, at least a decent one within walking distance. So we also started looking at furnished or semi-furnished apartments just because furnishing a place from scratch can get so expensive, especially here. And I'm not sure how long we're staying because I didn't want to invest too much in like brand new furniture. So the first place I'm heading to is a service department in North Point, which met all the criteria on my checklist. But I got pretty turned off by the neighborhood to be honest, especially the particular block that the apartment was on. And I knew even before I got into the building that this was going to be a no, but I thought it would be too rude just to not show up or cancel at this point so I just go upstairs. The building was very nice, it was super new and modern, it had a very chic hotel feel, but the apartments were very small and the views weren't great except for the penthouse which they showed me just for fun. <laughs> and that of course was like goals, but there's no way I'd be happy seeing and smelling all of this every day so I kept looking. I also learned after talking to some other people about my search that North Point is not a very expat friendly area and that living there would be really challenging if you don't speak Cantonese, so I'm glad I kept it moving. And this time I expanded my search a little bit just to include furnished and unfurnished and I found a broker that had some really great options. So we went over my criteria, he sent me a long list of options and I picked three to schedule viewings for. The first one was in Wan Chai, a neighborhood that I absolutely love. It's close to everything, it's really lively and the apartment was gorgeous. I love the full kitchen, all the light and the views, and the roof deck would be really great for entertaining. The bedrooms were on the smaller side, but the rest of the place had a really good layout, the gym was amazing, and this was a really strong contender. I honestly didn't see anything wrong with this apartment, but I just wanted to keep options open, so then we were off to the next one. The next one was also in Wan Chai, but on a much quieter street, not a busy one, which was nice, and it had that Lux Hotel vibe that my husband loved, but the apartment was just really not amazing. The dark wood floors and finishings were really nice and there was a nice amount of closet space, but the kitchenette was horrible. It only had a half fridge, like it was like a college dorm style situation and that was just so impractical for our lifestyle, so I was going to have to pass on this unit. I asked if they had other lands with different kitchens in the building, but he said most of the ones in my price range would be the same unless I was willing to go up for a much larger unit, so moving on. Also, they wouldn't let me see the amenities, which I thought was weird. Only residents are allowed on those floors, so I just had to look at this picture book. Then we headed over to Mid Levels, another area I love, but the pricing here is really steep for what you get. The area gets bougier the higher up the hill you go, but you also get amazing views of the peak, and you can have access to really nice hiking every weekend if that's your thing. But it's also harder to walk around because of how steep the hills are, and a lot of people in Mid Levels just use the escalator that goes up and down in the morning, or in the afternoon, or they just take taxis everywhere. But anyway, here we go. This building is a lot less glam and there's major construction happening across the street, so it's really a big eyesore. And the apartment that I looked at is like directly facing the site, so it's just really not cute. Like it has a view, but it's a terrible one. Um, and 
I'm also mildly concerned about the noise that might happen during the day when I'm home. It's quiet now because it's a weekend, but I'm thinking during the week it might get pretty bad. And the kitchen here is slightly better. It still has a baby fridge, although this one actually has a separate freezer, so a little bit better, but not much. Overall, this apartment is fine. It's unremarkable, not great. So anyway, those are some of the units I looked at on my apartment hunting journey, and we are really happy with the place we ended up with, which I'm not sharing details about the location or doing a full tour right now, just for security reasons, but it's one of the areas I really loved, it has the views I wanted, it's surprisingly spacious, and it meets everything on my checklist. And for reference, here's some of what you would need to know if you were deciding to move forward with the lease at this point. Again, this is just based on my research. Some of the info may vary or even be updated by the time you see this video, so just keep that in mind. But anyway, here we go. So, Hong Kong management agencies will typically ask to see a copy of your passport and Hong Kong ID if you have one, a valid working permit or visa, and proof of employment. You will also need to open up a local bank account, and opening one can take some time, so please make that your first step because it can take some time to get all that done. Also, as the potential tenant, you need to make sure the landlord has consent from the bank to rent the apartment if it's still under mortgage. If there's no bank consent and the landlord defaults on the mortgage, then the bank can legally force an eviction and you do not want to be caught up in that. Also, a standard lease in Hong Kong is two years, not like one like the States, but with all the expats in and out of town, it's reasonable to think that a landlord would negotiate that term if you're not sure about committing, and oftentimes you can negotiate the asking price of the rent down, so don't be afraid to ask. So anyway, I hope this video helped if you're thinking about moving here or just curious about the real estate market in Hong Kong. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out some of my other videos, like, comment, and share this one or some of your other favorites, and I will catch you in the next video. Thank you so much, guys.